Hello guys and welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we're going to be learning how to retouch your beauty portrait from scratch to finish. And uh, before this video ends, I have a special announcement for you. So you just need to watch through to get that as an announcement. And trust me, you will love it. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to be doing to this image is to add some details. I noticed that the image lacks some details, so I'm going to load up my Retouch Academy. Let me just quickly use this and add details, but that is not what, what we're going to be working with. We're going to be working with our Retouch Action. This is just to give us some more skin textures. All right, so that being done, I'm going to load up my Action over here. So the first thing we're going to be doing is to clean off the blemishes. I'll just make a duplicate, pick up my patch tool and just remove the few ones that we can remove from here. Okay, so I think we're done. So before the after just close the blemishes there. The red one we can fix using our frequency separation. Then I'll load up my frequency separation action. So we need to retain a lot of textures at this point. So for this one, we're going to be Walking somewhere around six. Let's see what six looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think we'll do it at five. Press OK. Five is good. Open up our frequency version. So I'm going to be working on my low frequency copy. Picking up my mixer brush tool. I'm going to be keeping my wetness at 30 and my flow at 31. Okay. I think I like it there. I think I like it there. All right, so let's just quickly start painting. So if you notice my sample earlier is turned off, if you turn it on and you clear your image, this is what you're going to get. So it's going to mess the whole thing up. So make sure it's turned off. And the reason I'm working on my low frequency copy is so that it serves as a back, as a uh, backup. It serves as a copy because we'll still have our low frequency equation down here. So if we make any mistake here, we can just use our mask and clean it and know that we are not going back to the original image the way it was on our settings still applied here. Yeah. So if you notice, I'm increasing and reducing the size of my mixer brush, depending on what the area I want to paint by time is looking like. So when you are doing your own, you also need to be very careful and be very mindful about that because it's going to affect your general overall result at the end of the day. So we'll just keep going like this. Beautiful. So this is what we've done so far, the before, the after. All right, go over to this side, we do the same thing. So if you also notice, you'll notice that I'm not zooming in so tight and the touching from this distance, so I can be seeing the real time effect of what I'm doing on my object. So I won't have to zoom in and think I'm painting right at the, at the end of the day where you zoom out, you will notice that you distorted your image. It's very important to you touch for a reasonable distance so you could see the effect of what you are doing in real time and real life. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we need to take care of now is that we need to zoom in a little, pick up our high frequency and our clone stamp, and those go through the image and know if there are other little, little blemishes we would also love to take care of. All right? So we'll just go through it and remove some other blemishes before we do our dodge and bone. So if you zoom in a bit closer, you notice there are some skin textures that might be uneven that you wouldn't want to retain so you just use your clone stamp make sure your clone stamp is tiny and just take care of those blemishes be sure that what you are doing here is just affecting the texture it's not affecting the color so that area is still perfectly protected 
So this is why sometimes it's even almost better to do your blemish removal, especially the tiny ones within your request uh, separation process. All right, so having done that, I'm going to quickly load up my dodging and burning. This is our dodge and burn over here. We'll just play our dodge and burn. Play our burn. So I would have actually used my dodge and burn check there here, but looking at the image, I want to have a lot of contrast and a lot of text and a lot of uh, three three dimensional look. And the only tech layer that can give me a little simulation of that is black and white tech layer, I'm not this particular grayish inverted check, check layer. So I'm going to use my black and white to create a check layer. Then I'm going to tone it down just all the way down. The way it will look like we are even trying to remove blemishes like this, tone the reds down. So you notice that the highlights are now quite accentuated and all of that. So this is what I want to achieve. So pick up our dots, make pick up our brush, and I'm going to be brushing them with four. I'll turn off my frequency separation so I can see exactly where the highlights we are falling originally. So I'm going to make the highlights almost very, very strong. So to not waste a lot of time, let me just take it up to seven. So that at one touch, we get very strong effects. Very good. Like that. So you see do our lights lightening this. We we'll just follow it like that. Got that highlight over there. Got this one. Got this one over the nose. Got this one in there. I think that is quite too much. Yeah. All right. So look at the arm here. I need this to be very, very highlighted. And here as well, but not as bright as this area. Look at this one. That's color gold. Look at here. So where you see those very highlighted dodging and burning this is how it's achieved you just paint it to be very very extremely bright but maybe you're not entirely creeping but almost creeping though yeah so let me turn out the black and white so you'll see exactly what we've done so far with our dots the before the after the before the after so we still have a very strong highlight the moment we turn on our frequency pressure now you see the way it's blending in yeah tiny bit i don't know if i really like that one over there no i do not making that to look weird i might actually have to paint that out with our repressive separation so just flatten that area out i'm kind of so yeah come come all the way down to that this area And we are good to go. So I'm going to turn on my repaint separation now. Yeah, so I needed to flatten this area out a bit. Turn on my dot and bump. Pick up our low frequency, pick up our mix up brush. They're here to flex and I'll take it. So I'll just definitely paint it to shadows and highlights together. Flatten it out. All right. So once we turn on our, our dot and bump again, you see that area properly. Deleted. So it means now we are going to adjust the shape of the lighting in there. Just make it straight. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Thousands. Buddy. All right. So with that being done, I think I need to burn my lips. I didn't burn my lips. So we'll just stack in here. Give that a lip line. Okay, beautiful. 
So what I'm going to do now is I need this image to even be more softer than it's looking already. I'm not satisfied with the textures and the softness. It's still looking rough. So I'm going to one more time load up another prepare separation action. But this time around, I'm going to intentionally pull it down, uh, keep the Gaussian blur in such a way that textures will be lost to an extent. So I'm going to play it again, but this time around, keeping it at three. Remember the first one we did, we kept it at, uh, I think six. Now we're keeping it at three. So now I'm going to go into the frequency equation again, go to my real frequency, convert to smart object. Now use Gaussian blur to paint it out. Simple. So just brighten it all. Yeah, they're good. Very good. Press OK. Press Ctrl I over your mask. And just paint over the object, over the skin rather. So the way that we've done our frequency equation, you need to also follow the movement of light as, sorry, not frequency equation, our dodge and burn. You need to also follow the movement of light so we don't flatten everything out. It will require you to another dodge and burning later. So let's just stick to it. Yeah, but before we do that, I missed a step. Sorry. We need to take it all the way back. So we just go to our history, go to where we uh, flattened the image. So sorry we had to do that. We'll just come back to it here, over here. So I need these highlights to be stronger than it is already. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my dot. Yes, this is what I must. I'm going to make a duplicate of my dot, then pick up my brush and turn it down on a few areas that I wouldn't want to be extremely strong. Yeah, like the forehead over here, maybe down a bit, just a bit. The neck, a little bit, and the cheek, a little bit. Every other part is perfect. Beautiful. So you want, you also want to have strong effects for your shadows, you can also as well do it for your bones and bring it down. You can as well do it for your bones and bring it down, yeah. So this was a step at least, it was... This is very, very crucial to the end result we're going to get, trust me. So let's load up our action again. So keep it at three, press OK. Open up our FX. Go down to low frequency, convert to smart object, go to your filter, go to blur, cushion blur. Uh, we increased it till we got a smooth skin. So let's see how it goes. Uh, 10 will be a good place. Press enter. Control I. All right, so we'll just start painting. All right, bring it down a bit. Paint over here. So the idea is just to get a soft skin. Yeah, not something so edgy and hard and all of that. Just a soft skin. Good. Nice one. One about to this area to the same. All right, this is good. So I think we need to reduce the opacity of the overall soft name. So I'm just going to bring it down from the frequency pressure group, rather. Just turn it down a little bit. Good. So before the after, so you see the way we've been able to achieve a very soft skin. Now it's time to color grade our image. So to do that, I'm going to separate this object from the background. So I'll make a selection of my object. Once the image is selected, uh, okay, so I think I need to just make a little adjustment here. Beautiful. It's done. And over this area. I think I'm going to part on that. All right. So once this is done, right, click and go to select inverse so that your background will be selected. Then duplicate your background copy. Go to layer via cut and you will have your object on a separate layer. Now, the reason I did this is because the color grading I want to do, I want it applied just on my skin, not on the background. So I'm going to load up our color lookup table that we'll be using. Now, this is the announcement. The color lookup table we are using to create this particular amazing skin tone, you are going to be getting it for free. This is what it looks like. 
and you are going to be getting it for free. So you are not paying anything. All you need, we like I always say, join our WhatsApp community and you will be able to get it. So how do you join the WhatsApp community? Just go to the description of the video. You will see our WhatsApp link there. Uh, click on it and you will join the community. This this action we use in retouching is also available for you there for free. Now, the issue is that I want it just on my skin, not on the hair or the hairband. And to do that, I'm going to minimize this for now. Then make a duplicate of the background copy. Create a mask for it. Then just go straight to my color range. I think I have that selected already. Yeah, beautiful. Then press OK. Use the mask and place the color lookup mask. The issue with this right now is that it's also on my hairband. So I'm just going to use my brush and remove it from the hairband and also add it to some areas where it's not. Did it remove it entirely? Notice I left some so that the color will not be entirely on uh will not be entirely looking abstract okay so of course this is too much we need to bring this down a little then looking at my image i feel she needs a little light on her face so i'm just going to pick up my cuffs pick my hand to brighten the face up a bit press ctrl i pick up your brush and just paint it over the place nice so the next thing i want to do now is i want to just do a global Color grading, I'll take it to my camera or no, so vibrance are all of that, and we are good to go. Straight to our vibrance, very important. Will you go up a little? Yeah, I think I need to darken it down a bit like this, open up the shadows slightly. Excuse me, just a little highlight. Very, and we are done. This is it. This is how you retouch your skin in Photoshop. So let me show you an overall before and after. But before we do that, let's apply our tone for you and see what it does for us. So we'll also be sticking with three. We use three to, you know, get some softness. Whoa, this is so good. The before, the after, but it's too much. So bring it down a bit. Yeah, so I think I'm losing a lot of light in my shadows as well, so we brush it off. All right, we are done. So let me show you an overall before and after, like I said before. So I'm going to go to my history, create a snapshot, go all the way to the top. So this is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe, do make sure you turn on your notification bell as well so that you will 